Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. Guys, if you didn't know it, the global zinc market is set to grow from $26.6 billion in 2022 to just under $30 billion in 2023. That's a compound annual growth rate of just under 11%. In fact, it's 10.9%. And if you want to be a part of that growth, then this interview with Bill Williamson of Ubique Minerals is exactly what you want to watch because the company, amongst other things, has announced, here's a press release, Ubique purchases Ofer Gold Mills claims, Ofer Gold claims and Daniel Harbor Zinc Project. So they're expanding their zinc properties. Bill, welcome back, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to speak to you, George. Well, we both had a little time off here in the summer. It's back to work because the kids are in school. That means all of us are back at our desk. The whole world is back. Let's talk zinc before we even start talking about this great purchase because it's an amazing purchase. Um, why are you so bullish on zinc? Because zinc is obviously your focus. Well, uh, zinc, like, like you mentioned in your intro, it, it's going to grow and it's expected to grow. We've, we've seen a little bit of a, a decline in the price of zinc over the last 12 months. And we'll probably see declining in the price uh, of zinc uh, over the next six to 12 months. After that, it is expected to rise exponentially. So we're quite bullish on, on, on zinc long term. Uh, we're not looking at uh, any of this short term. So everything we do is long term. So and um, yeah, so we, we, we feel that the overall growth in that market is, is sustainable. And there are not so many zinc mines getting uh, online in the short interim of time, within the span of the next uh, five to seven years. So we feel there's a good space in that market. Yep, that's just supply and demand, right? So this acquisition now, it's not, technically it's an acquisition, but you had 70% interest in these claims already. And yes, now you're buying uh, the last 30%, I guess, so you can have a 100% interest. And what I love about it is the Daniel Harbor properties cover both the area of the past producing high-grade zinc mine and extensions of favorable areas. So you're not just picking up some land. You think there might be some zinc there. It, there's a past producing high-grade zinc mine there. Tell us about why you know, why you picked up this last 30%, why it's so, and, and, how, and how, big of a, how big of a role that past producing mine is going to play. Yeah, so basically the uh, company had the Daniels Harbor claims that uh, covered most of the previous mine. And then we had done an earning agreement with Ophir Gold, where it allowed us to earn up to 70%. Uh, and we hit the milestones up to the first 55%. And uh, then analyzing the, 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 the project, we decided that it would be in our favor to have a full control over all claims and the, uh, and the potential. So we approached Ophir and, and made them an offer, which they have accepted. And I think it's in the favor of all parties. What we can now do is we can pay, uh, look at the holistic picture on, on a long, longer term scale as 100% owned, owned by UBIC. So it, like, you, like you pointed out, the, the project was a past producing mine. So it produced over 7 million tons from 1975 to 1990. Wow. And, so, and the average grade was 7.93% zinc, which is very high. And it was one of the highest grade and cleanest zinc in, in the world. And it was operated by tech, and it was just uh, the old uh, Red Dog mine uh, took over from this one. So it wasn't even necessarily depleted at the time when it was closed in 1990. So what we're going to do now is we're putting together a comprehensive plan. We've been drilling the project, uh, both within our own parameters and within the Ophir claims. And so what we're doing now is, is we, we, we're taking one step back and uh, taking the whole area and, and, and planning it out. So we'll do a, a, a campaign uh, in, in the next few weeks. And uh, following that, we'll, we'll do a comprehensive report on, on, on the next steps. So you need that. You, obviously, you need a little more information before you, you create your report. But what can you tell us from now, ballpark, what do you think the next year or two might look like? Because you probably have a pretty good idea. You're probably waiting for confirmation. If not, let me know. But if you do, what do you think the next year or two looks like in terms of steps? Well, what we're going to do is we're aiming at getting a, a, a small resource of a, at least a million tons and even more 
uh, over that period of time. So we're now going to uh, continue our, our, our drilling program. We're not going to drill this year, but we'll drill uh, next summer. But what we're going to do now is we're doing a, a, a much more detailed plan and towards the, the, the resource and, and the full compliant resource. So that, that, that is the main plan. And uh, then following that, to take a decision about, about the next step. I mean, we've looked at the possibility because we, we know that we can make a, a small small resource with uh, not big cost. And uh, we could do just uh, plain uh, mining and, and, and get the material processed in another, uh, in another place. So we, we, we're actively looking at that possibility. Yeah, and you go on to say that in addition, in addition to the past producing high-grade zinc mine, um, exploration drilling to date has confirmed three zinc deposits and has indications of two more. So you're really on to something here. Of course, like we said, there's no guarantee. Uh, you still got to do the work, but this is a pretty advanced project, right, Val? Yes, it is. It is. And and that's why we're very excited about the next steps and that uh, that we managed to secure the Ophir claims. And that, like I say, opens up a, a lot of uh, possibilities and, and gives us a little bit more firepower for the next next uh, phases of the project. So it, it, it will be the project will see much more action now than it has seen, seen, seen previously from our, our behalf. Now, you can't get the work done unless you've got some capital. You guys have announced a life finance, which is the listed issuer financing exemption, which allows you to raise money from shareholders. They don't have to be accredited. There are no hold periods. And you've already closed your first tranche. So you're about looks like you're about 25% of your way through your goals. Talk to us about that financing. Yeah, yeah. So we set we were set out to uh, raise 1.2 million dollars uh, in a very harsh environment, but we've already closed the first tranche within days of uh, announcing it. We're now working towards the second tranche, and uh, our share price has been doing good. We're doing the placing at eight cents uh, with a 15 cent warrant. We're currently trading uh, when this interview is going on at 11 and a half cent. So there's a good margin and upside to, for the people who want to. Uh, Take part, like you say, you don't have to be a accredited investor to take part in this one. So uh, yeah, we're quite excited uh, for it and, and and quite optimistic. Now, in previous interviews, uh, you're on because like I said, you're you're really uh, zinc is your real focus, and I like that because there's some companies, George Com Minerals, you know, they're chasing zinc and copper and this and that, and it seems like they're just flailing. You've always been pretty focused, and one of the projects that you had was the Namibia uh, project. There was a mine down there. We talked about the past. Now, you and the seller agreed to kind of uh, terminate that that agreement for uh, 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 presently. Uh, what happened there? And, uh, and uh, what should shareholders know about how that came to end? Well, uh, the short answer is that the markets, uh, you know, the capital markets closed on us during the, the, the period that we were uh, negotiating that and working on that. It's also correct to mention that we probably could have uh, closed funding to actually purchase the mine itself, but then it would be in, in our field. What I, what I went for and I did was to try to not only just get money for uh, purchasing the mine, but also to reopen it. So I went for the full bounty, and it was just uh, the markets were just too difficult at that time. And at the same time, the zinc price was declining, so the interest wasn't really there. But uh, we're still keen on that project if it if it becomes available to us again. So we're not shutting any doors. And as as was in our uh, uh, announcement with the vendor, it was all amicable, and uh, they forfeited their million dollar uh, penalty payment that they could have enforced on us. And it just shows the relationship between the, the, right. the parties. And I like that you say, uh, if if conditions are right, it's not like George Com Minerals came in and bought it and now belongs to somebody else. It's still there, just the economics of the zinc market and the equity and the small cap markets kind of went south in the, in the first six months of this year. But is it is it fair to say the door is potentially still open? There's... There's an there's still a good relationship there. Yeah, yeah. As far as I know, of course, they it could be sold tomorrow, and we we, we don't know. But uh, as right. far as I know, we don't we, we haven't heard about it being sold. 
But uh, like I say, we, we're open to, to uh, new ventures. And when I came part, to be part of the UBIC, I, I was very specific that we were not going to be a one project uh, uh, company. So we are exploring other venues and other opportunities and we'll continue to do so. Hey, Bill, I had a small technical glitch because some people might see that I'm in a different background right now from my cell phone. But the last question I had for you was regarding your relationship with Green Bank Capital. You become the, you, most of us took it easy over the summertime. You're making deals, you're acquiring 100% interest. You became CEO of Green Bank. Let's talk about Ubique's relationship with Green Bank and your position as CEO at Green Bank. Yeah, so uh, originally when I uh, came in to uh, play with UBIC Minerals, uh, it was uh, through Green Bank. And uh, I've always had a good relationship with Green Bank. Uh, I'm personally a shareholder in Green Bank. And during the summer, uh, uh, our company, uh, my personal company did some work for Green Bank and it uh, ended up that uh, we decided that, uh, and I was offered the, the position of to take over the CEO and chairman of Green Bank. Green Bank owns over 20% of UBIC Minerals, and UBIC Minerals owns uh, almost 8 or 9% of Green Bank. So there's a very much interlinked connections between the two companies. And uh, on the long run, I, I think uh, my position on both sides will, uh, will support both ends, if we can so so, and, and be, be just, we have a stronger unity in, in, in going forward. How do you see Green Bank helping out? the company in the future uh, beyond finance? Because I see that Green Bank nurtures uh, uh, companies, contributes management expertise. Obviously, you're a big part of that. You're on, you're, you're already, you, you beak and you're on the Green Bank side. But, you know, how, how do you see Green Bank potentially playing a bigger role in the future? Well, I can see Green Bank supporting us in acquiring other projects uh, around the world. And, and then, uh, you know, like I say, further acquisitions, funding, and uh, all the collaborations, and uh, there's a good team at Green Bank, both uh, in London and, and in uh, Toronto. So it just uh, strengthened our international standard. It's correct to say we're in Green Bank and UBIC, we're quite uh, international team. We're, we're based in the US, Canada, Iceland, the UK. And uh, within our team here, we've got people around the world, Africa. So we're quite, quite diverse and, and, and multinational team. Uh, Bill, you've, uh, you've done a great job this summer of just strengthening the company. Uh, obviously, you're doing that within the constraints of a weaker market in general for small caps. But you and I have been around long enough to know that at some point, this catharsis period ends where the promotional companies, you know, George Call Minerals, who saw Shiny Rock in Greece and said, we're going to raise money to try and find gold. Those companies are gone. And the survivors are the ones that typically... We can't say for sure, obviously, because that's for everyone at home to decide, but typically end up thriving because they have great CEOs like you, great management teams like you guys have there, uh, even the likes of Green Bank around you with all, you know, from Toronto, London, all over the world. So, uh, you know, the, the future looks bright for you. And I'm glad that right after Labor Day, you and I got on the, you know, got on Zoom here to bring everyone up to speed. I'm going to leave last words to you, my friend. Well, it's in market conditions like this where the opportunities exist. So uh, it, it's at these times where companies like UP, which is open up for uh, advancing and uh, opening up to look at other projects around the world. And it, it, it's like I say, we can take good advantage of that. We're in a prime position with our new frontline project. This is a very good news for us to have acquired the project 100%. And uh, we're going to work quite uh, diligently getting that uh, into production. Well, it sounds like the plan that you guys are going to put, put together is going to be available to everybody sometime month of September. So I look forward to having you back so we can discuss that plan. And I like how you left it off there with putting it into production. Obviously, that's not something you say lightly. You must think you've got some visibility there. So we'll drill down, pardon the pun, but we'll drill down further on that on the next interview. But, Bill, until then, thanks for joining us. Can't wait to have you back, my friend. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Bill Williamson, he's a CEO at Ubique Minerals, trades in Canada, U 
BQ. And let's not forget our great friends in Europe, specifically in Germany, on the Frankfurt Exchange under 2UM. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.